In an alternate dystopian future, feuding nations, Eastern Federation and Europa, and their 50-year-long war with the Federation consuming the entire continent of Eurasia while also acquiring Europa's robot armies. Peace does not last long as political oppression gives rise to a resistance movement in an area called Zone 7, prompting the Federation to mobilize its military by recruiting citizens. The environmental pollution worsened the situation, a side effect of war and continuous heavy industry. One morning, the Azuma family gathers in the garden for a photo shoot at their lavish residence. This endeavor is done to commemorate the only child, Tetsuya, for his engagement with his girlfriend, Luna. During the session, his father, Dr. Kotaro Azuma, argues with him about joining the military instead of pursuing a safe career like medicine. Tetsuya is adamant about serving the country to prove he is not a coward. Feeling disappointed with his decision, Dr. Azuma decides not to join the group photo after excusing himself and congratulating Luna for loving his son. He hurriedly goes to the Ministry of Health to showcase a revolutionary scientific discovery. While in front of a sea of politicians in the audience, he explains that humans are on the brink of extinction due to the state of the world. He then presents an answer to their problem. Neo cells transform human cells that can be used to regenerate human tissue, essentially replacing broken body parts. The catch is that they are only found in the genome of a single remote ethnic group in Zone 7 because they possess the purest form of DNA. Dr. Izuma shows confidence in his work, stating that he can develop the Neo cells for human use. His presentation causes an uproar from the audience. Though the idea intrigues the chairman of Nikko Hyralin Corporation, General Kamijo. Meanwhile, Tetsuya is driving his motorcycle when he tells Luna she will marry a war hero soon once he finishes the draft, much to her excitement. Later in the afternoon, the chairman's special attaché, Kaioru Naito, talks to Dr. Azuma privately to offer a military sponsorship deal. Before leaving his calling card, he reveals his knowledge about Azuma's wife Midori's onset blindness and implies he can do something to cure her. Though briefly thinking about his decision, the doctor is swayed to accept the proposal. One year later, Tetsuya is deployed to the front lines of Eurasia Zone 7. The war takes a heavy toll on him, but the young soldier remains resilient. One night, he saves a baby from a wreckage when suddenly, a grenade is detonated on his feet revealing a booby trap. Elsewhere, at the Eastern Federation Defense Ministry, Dr. Azuma is working hard on the Neo cells when he invites Luna's father, Dr. Kazuki, to witness the research live in his lab. At the same time, Luna waits quietly in the lobby, filled with melancholy over Tetsuya's deployment. Kazuki understands Dr. Azuma's disappointment, as he believes it is natural for sons to be defiant toward their fathers. Despite their rivalry in the development of human evolution, Dr. Azuma offers him a peek at the testing room. Kazuki is awestruck to see full-grown body parts that can replace broken ones, rendering his armor development useless. The doctor sadly informs him that additional research needs to be completed, which prevents him from using the body parts for real-world applications. Meanwhile, the blind Midori is researching in her garden when she hears a car park in front of the residence. While her assistant attends to the guest, she is visited by Tetsuya's ghost, touching her on the shoulders. Though she cannot see him, she can feel his touch as if he was alive. The tearfully Tetsuya sobs and disappears as the assistant returns with distressing news. Tetsuya's colleague approaches and salutes before telling Midori her son died in combat. She breaks down and sits on the ground while her husband finds out at the same time through a phone call. Dr. Azuma is informed that Tetsuya's body will be brought to the ministry for his last rite. Suddenly, an alarm goes off, signaling an impending tank failure which alerts the whole staff. Tetsuya visits a sleeping Luna in the lobby and caresses her head before feeling intense pain in his chest. This prompts him to crawl out of the ministry and witness a surge of lightning strike in the laboratory. The electrical energy then flows through the liquid vats stimulating the Neo cells to restructure into living organisms. Dr. Azuma, Kazuki, and the staff watch in horror as a human-like entity emerges from the red pool, looking expressionless. Naito immediately calls for the military when he sees more humanoids come out of the vat. 
Soldiers enter the facility and start shooting at the entities, leaving only a few that escape through the sewers. They then climb out toward the pipelines and cover themselves with rags. Meanwhile, one of the humanoids, Akuban, encounters a freaked out Luna who comes to his aid before getting fetched by Dr. Kazuki. Elsewhere, Naito watches the lead humanoid, Bure, climb to the top of the Ministry's roof and wrap himself with the flag before dropping down at Tetsuya's casket. Tetsuya's ghost watches as the rest of the surviving experiments flee from the facility while being chased by the soldiers. Simultaneously, Midori arrives but gets her car hijacked by Burai when the driver gets killed. Dr. Kazuki and Luna come out with the latter, grieving at the casket. Dr. Izuma then carries Tetsuya's body into his lab to resurrect him, seeing that the Neo cells have the ability to regenerate instantaneously. Although Tetsuya is restored, his body does not heal quickly, so Kazuki suggests he be brought to his residence to hide him from the government while recuperating. Elsewhere, Midori tries to resuscitate a dead humanoid, thinking a terrorist from Zone 7 killed him. Burai feels compassion and takes her with them in their exile. The military arrived shortly after at the border, with Naito determined to rescue Midori despite knowing the experiments had fled to a heavily irradiated region. Over some days, the humanoids travel to a desolate, snowy mountainside in search of refuge. Simultaneously, Dr. Kazuki houses Tetsuya in a liquid chamber and infuses him with his experimental battle armor to strengthen his body. While this process takes place, Tetsuya dreams about his past exploits in the military. Later, the humanoids become desperate as Burai cries to the heavens over their situation. Suddenly, he and the others see a derelict castle in the distance, which once belonged to the Europa army. As they enter, they see a vast throne room filled with broken machinery. They enter another room, which contains remnants of a decommissioned robot army. Bray returns to the throne and delivers a speech on his hatred toward humankind, vowing to retaliate and wage war. He declares their group Neo Sapiens as everyone dons robotic armor and refurbishes the castle to establish a headquarters base. Almost immediately, they reconfigure Europa's robots and deploy them to the populace in Zone 7, where they wreak havoc. Days after waging war, Bureau is informed by Neo Sapien associate, Sagiri, about 11 scientists that work in the Eastern Federation. He orders them to be kidnapped to use their skills to advance the robot army. Meanwhile, Dr. Kazuki and Luna wait patiently as they stare at Tetsuya's rejuvenation tank. Just then, their residence is attacked by Seiguri, who is intent on taking the doctor, now injured, back to the base. Akiban recognizes Luna, who saved him in the ministry office's lobby weeks ago. Dr. Kazuki tries to fight back, but Seiguri stabs him. Suddenly, Tetsuya awakens, bursting out of the tank, fully armored in white. Though still dazed, he manages to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Seiguri, showcasing superb fighting skills. Though she tries to pierce him with her katana, he evades her quickly. As he falls on the floor after the fight, Seiguru discovers the blade is detached and stabbed in her stomach. Akiban freaks out and carries her out as they escape. As Tetsuya's Neo cells slowly regenerate him, Dr. Kazuki advises him to seek out his true destiny, believing the lightning bolt chose him to be the people's savior. In his dying breath, he tells Luna never to look back. The building starts to collapse, forcing her and Tetsuya to flee immediately. Elsewhere in the capital, board members and politicians convene with Chairman Kamijo and Dr. Azuma as they have grown impatient with the news regarding the Neo-Cell research. As they chastise the doctor, Lieutenant Colonel Kamijo speaks up, pointing out that they are too consumed with their selfishness that they do not care about the Neo-Sapien uprising. Lifting his blade, he makes an example of one of the members by killing him to usurp authority over the Eastern Federation. Much to Sato's amusement, to end the self-profiteering actions of the other politicians, he orders all of them to be killed. He then forces Dr. Azuma to devise a plan to destroy the Neo Sapiens. Later at night, a weakened Tetsuya and Luna reach the war-torn streets of the Federation. Suddenly, they see the robot battalion, led by Burai, march forward to get to the capital. The Neo Sapien leader hears Tetsuya's scream, prompting him to order the robots to shoot down his hideout. Fortunately, from the ashes of the burning building, the mechanized Tetsuya emerges unharmed while he carries Luna in his arms. 
He flies away from the robot army and dashes to the rooftop of another building to keep Luna safe while he fights back. As he leaps down, he attacks the robots, quickly destroying some with a chop and a flying kick. After tethering the robots with a built-in electrified grapple, he runs through them at blazing speed and uses their weapons against them. He then fights with Bure, an equally skilled fighter due to his DNA-filled neocellular body. As they fly into the air, Bure recognizes him as the dead son of Maidori before punching him back to the ground. When Tetsuya awakens from unconsciousness, he reunites with Luna and the pair leads away from the rubble-filled area much to the protest of local children who believe they are freaks of nature. Later in the Defense Ministry Laboratory, it is revealed that Nato lied about Dr. Azuma, creating the Neo Sapiens, as he knows the truth will only hurt the cause of Lieutenant Colonel Kamijo. For now, they need to keep the ruse to allow the war to continue while Dr. Azuma finds out how to stop the Neo Sapiens with his research. Meanwhile, Tetsuya and Luna are on their way to Zone 7 but discover that the root is highly toxic, affecting Luna until she falls ill. Memories flash back in Tetsuya's head about the war and the difficult choices he made that he shared with Luna. While holding her in her arms, her eyes turn white and she faints. A doctor wearing a gas mask passes by and gives them aid. Simultaneously, a badly beaten Seiguri is returned to the castle, where another associate, Barishin, breaks down after developing feelings for her. In her final breath, she appears drawn to heaven and becomes peaceful. As Biria and Akuban grieve, Barishin vows to kill the person responsible for her death. Later, the mysterious doctor leads Tetsuya to a nearby village in Zone 7, where the doctor agrees to treat Luna for radiation poisoning. While they settle inside his home, a live news broadcast airs all over TV featuring Lieutenant Colonel Kamijo announcing his newly appointed position as leader of the Eastern Federation, taking over his father. While the treatment is ongoing, the doctor talks to Tetsuya about a Federation raid years ago that slaughtered the Zone 7 citizens, with others kidnapped because of the government's policies affecting the indigenous sector. Though their conversation is briefly interrupted by local marksmen distrustful of Tetsuya, the doctor continues talking. He reveals a local legend about the guardian deity, Kashur, who kept peace and safety before the war broke out, making them lose faith. They took up arms, became soldiers, and eventually terrorists in the eyes of the Federation. Suddenly, the Federation army raids the village, killing some innocent people before Tetsuya steps in to retaliate. While confronting one of the soldiers, he sees a vision of himself as a former soldier blinded by the orders of the government. He tells the doctor he has all the right to kill him for participating in the raids years ago, though he refuses, asking him to save the people and shed his former self. As he attacks the invaders, Barshan sees him, recognizing him as the killer of Seguri. With both their swords drawn, they fight fiercely. Tetsuya is pinned down, distracted after seeing Luna brought inside the Federation aircraft. He chases them down, but Barshin impales him with his blade at the stone gate. Fortunately, Tetsuya breaks free and crosses the other side before the gate shuts Barshin out. Shortly afterward, he returns to finish the fight, declaring himself deity Kasher. Tetsuya wins after one sharp blow, though he is injured in the process. Barshin sees a vision of heaven, described by Seijuri, and finds peace before letting go of his spirit. Meanwhile, inside the airlifted cargo, Luna escapes with a terrified Akiban who gets shot by a soldier. As they reach another area, the pair are met by Dr. Azuma, who rescues and takes them back to the Defense Ministry while the Neo Sapiens robot army invades. Unfortunately, they are met by a disgraced Naito, who was outed by General Kamijo for lying about the Neo cells. As he points a gun at the group, he intends to kill Dr. Azuma revealing the truth that the Neo Sapiens were created through harvested civilians' as body parts that fused due to the freak lightning bolt that hit the stone structure. While he rants, the pointed edifice crumbles and crushes him as Tetsuya falls from the sky. Not long after, Bure enters the ruined room with his robot army. He declares Tetsuya a brother to the Neo Sapiens and abducts him while bringing Luna along as she tends to Akuban. Dr. Azuma stands speechless as he sees them taken away, allowing Lieutenant Colonel Kamijo to confront him about the failure of Neo Cells. 
The doctor smiles and steps out of his way to pass judgment on a bleeding NATO who begs for his life, claiming he is unaware of the deception. Though he tries to crawl to the Red Pool, he dies. Meanwhile, at the Neo Sapien ship, Akiban takes his last breath, sees the guardian deity Kashern in heaven, and dies peacefully. A saddened bureau thanks Luna for taking care of him throughout his journey. He then brings Tetsuya to internally sleeping Midori. Tetsuya grows angry and lashes out, but is thrown against the room by Beret. Driven entirely by conviction, he explains his reasons for hating humanity, finding the absurdity in bringing peace through the war while condemning some people to die. While he thrashes a weakened Tetsuya around, Bureau E tells him he is set to launch a powerful machine that is set to self-destruct. As he sits him on his throne, he gives him one more chance to join his cause, believing they are allies in the war due to his Neo-Sapien DNA. A conference is held inside one of the Federation's military aircraft. As Lieutenant Colonel Kamijo plans out the attack, he is informed by his father that his coup deeded at is over, and he must regain control of the government. However, the Lieutenant Colonel dismisses him, intending to wipe out the Neo-Sapiens on his own. With the base now in range, the Federation aircraft deploy all the bombs to destroy the surrounding area filled with robots. This endeavor is followed by a stream of armored tanks running over many robot armies. Simultaneously, Tetsuya sees a vision of Maidori alive and seeks her counsel to decide whether his actions will cause harm. She advises him to no longer dwell on the guilt over his past actions and choose to end the fight for peace. Revitalized by her words, Tetsuya flies out of the castle and comes in between the robot army and the invading soldiers of the Federation. Meanwhile, Dr. Azuma, accompanied by Kamijo, discovers his wife dead and breaks down while wrapping her in his arms. Berea appears in the throne room and confronts the lieutenant colonel as Luna declares the Neo-Sapiens as human beings. Kamijo reveals the Neo cells were harvested from the prisoners of war in Zone 7, under Naito's orders to help his father live longer. When that endeavor failed, he began to target all the ethnic minorities, including Bureau's family. This revelation triggers dormant memories in Bureau's head of his childhood, though they are still unclear as he bleeds his eyes out. While their confrontation is heated, Tetsuya dashes toward the Doomsday Machine and seemingly stops the timer from striking at the last minute. Somehow, he is brought to the past, seeing a vision of Bureau and his family getting attacked by his unit during the raids. It is revealed that Tetsuya killed his wife in cold blood when his colleague could not bear to pull the trigger. He then screams in agony as the machine explodes and eviscerates the area, including Bureau. Tetsuya reunites with Luna and sees Bureau's corpse bleeding like an average human. He then stops his father from resurrecting his mother, believing he is blinded by suffering. As Tetsuya carries his mother away, Dr. Azuma retaliates by fatally shooting Luna. Enraged, the young man kills his father while apologizing to his mother in his mind. Fortunately, Luna awakens after resurrecting from her exposure to the blood of Bure. As they embrace, she reveals the souls of the dead are overpowering her, and she is feeling intense pain. Despite this, Tetsuya lets her focus on the good memories they have. They kiss as an intense pillar of light fires through space and crashes into them. At the same time, pleasant memories of Tetsuya's family life and the heartwarming experiences of the rest of the characters are revealed as the shimmering light beam shoots down on an alien planet. Its effects, unknown.